Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> um, my name is Will Geary. Um, I'm on Twitter at W Geary. Um, this is my second time at Transportation Techies, so thanks to Tyler and Cozy for having me. Um, I'm a data scientist at a startup called City Swifter. Uh, City Swifter is a business intelligence platform um, for urban bus networks. We do predictive modeling, analytics, and visualization for clients in the bus industry. Um, currently, we're focused on uh, the UK and Ireland. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple personal projects. Um, so I presented on this a little over a year ago, um, so I'm going to skip a bunch of slides. Um, but Transit Flow is a project that I made last, I guess, two summers ago now. Um, and it's a tool to facilitate generating um, animated transit maps based on the timetables. Um, so you, here you see the blue dots are buses, red dots are subways, yellow dots are trains, and pink dots are ferries. And then at the bottom, you get this stacked area chart that tells you how many transit vehicles uh, by type are scheduled to be in motion uh, at any given minute throughout the day. Um, so I, I could talk about this for a while, but I'll just sort of skip through these. Um, it's, it's pulling data from uh, Transitland, which is an open um, data repository for transit data. Um, it was sponsored by Mapsen, where I was an intern when I made this. Um, Mapsen went out of business, but now is um, supported by the Linux Foundation, so their tools will live on, which is great. Um, there is a Toronto one, since we're talking about Toronto. Um, someone wrote like an audioization script on top of it. I'll just let this play for a second because it's kind of fun. Um, so this is sort of how it works. Um, I have uh, rewritten some things in the past year. Primarily, I wanted to visualize local GTFS files rather than um, GTFS coming from Transitland, because cause what if you have like a custom GTFS that you're working on um, and it's not on Transitland, but you want to visualize it. So um, that is in the works, and if you're interested in it, feel free to reach out to me. Um, one of the benefits is that I can finally visualize New Jersey Transit data. Um, it, it wasn't working so well with the Transitland API. There were some uh, technical issues, so a bunch of New Jersey folks got mad at me when I left out New Jersey Transit, so I have that on here now. And then I've been experimenting, like, how, how big can you go? And this is the largest I've been able to visualize uh, from Washington, D.C. in the lower left to, Bo to Boston in the upper right. Um, so this, this is every day on a Monday of sc scheduled transit activities. And I love how you can see, like, the beating uh, heartbeat that is the New York City subway in the middle. Um, but anyway, I wanted to move on and talk about a project I've worked on more recently. Uh, called Wayfinder 3D. Um, the motivation here was, well, as a New Yorker, I know that it's often uh, fastest to get somewhere by bike um, or by walking or by transit than the car. So I wanted to make a visualization tool that would um, enable me to prove this to people. Um, so essentially, uh, it's like a 3D map, and you can race uh, multiple modes against each other. Um, this is from Columbia to NYU. Unfortunately, driving actually does win in the end here. Um, <laughs> which I should choose another uh, demo example. Um, so it's it's getting um, with an origin and destination that you input. It pulls uh, the route and ETA from Google Maps API, and then plots them on a 3D globe using Cesium JS, uh, which is sort of like an open source Google Earth. Um, and I'll talk more about that. Um, obviously, it's, it's missing some pretty crucial things, um, and I got some some feedback on Twitter and elsewhere that was interesting. Um, so, you know, circling to find parking, for example, is a huge um, consideration that is not shown here. Um, so that would be an interesting thing to incorporate, as well as some other variables. Um, just a few more. This is um, uh, DC to Baltimore. Um, this was an instance where transit won out. Um, and then I have a, um, a notebook, which I can share with the organizers and put on Twitter. But um, Cesium actually has a Python library as well. Um, I gave a talk last summer um, at PyCon Ghana. Um, and there I shared some code to basically run through a GPS trace that I had collected from a bike ride and then toss it onto a 3D globe. Um, there's a library called Cesium Pi, so you can just sort of view these, uh, view the maps right in a Jupyter Notebook, um, which is kind of nice. 
Um, a few people have, have started using it already. Um, someone, Guille Lopez uh, from Barcelona. Um, here he's, he's comparing car versus public transport and saying that public transport is better than many people think. Um, and maybe that's why it's used more often than the car for that particular trip. Um, he even went as far as to change the labels uh, to Spanish, which is cool. Um, and he made another one also in Barcelona uh, showing the bicycle, bicicleta, winning out over the car in transit. Um, and he's making the case here that where there is a bike lane, the bicycle is shown to be the fastest means of transport. So I was excited to see this because this is these are sort of the cases that I was hoping to um, make it easier for people to visualize. Um, so I'll give a quick quick demo. Uh, So it's on my GitHub, uh, Will Geary slash Wayfinder 3D. Um, I will clone it to my desktop and CD into it. Um, so this is what the command looks like. It's, it's a Python application that does all the data processing. Um, you give it an origin, destination, and then a list of the modes that you want to see. So I'm just going to copy this in for this example. OK, and then you go to your browser. Um, and this is what you got. Uh, transit very fast there. Um, one thing that's nice, so this, this is what the cesium mapping interface looks like. Um, you're given sort of this like timeline slider situation um, just for free. Like it, it's a time dynamic 3D globe, uh, which is pretty nice. You can do things like follow a particular um, mode just clicking on it, which is kind of cool. Um, anyone have a route in particular that they want to see? OK, let's try that. Uh, OK, so I'll say Hudson Yard. George Washington. You want to see all by all four modes, or maybe I'll leave off walking. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Eh. <laughs> oh, don't get your hopes up. I don't know. Oh, man. I don't, I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh. I have noticed that oftentimes Google Maps, with the same destination in mind, it gives you actually different endpoints. End I'm not really sure why that's the case. Uh, sorry, buddy. I should have previewed that one. Um, uh, OK, so it's making how it works. It's making a request to the Google Maps API. Um, you could sub in a, a other directions APIs if you wanted to. Um, with the Python script, it's mapping it using cesium. Uh, cesium.js is a JavaScript library. Uh, and then someone on Twitter had said, could you supplement that graphic with the cost per distance slash, slash fuel consumption slash emissions graphic and do one for London? Um, and as much as I don't love receiving requests to do free work from strangers on the internet, I thought this was actually a fantastic idea. Um, so I've been thinking, like, how would you show cost for distance, like could you have sort of coins like like a Mario Kart type of video game or like how would you show fuel consumption or emissions? Um, so I've been working on this a little bit. Uh, the working title is Car Farts and it's basically like <laughs> to be able to visualize like a theoretical CO2 cloud as you compared modes, I think that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how big the, the point cloud should be to correspond to like what, what does CO2 look like? I don't know. Um, but if anyone, if any front end people want to play with this, I would love some help um, pushing forward car farts to the next level. Um, 
and then do I have a few minutes left? Um, okay, so I, I wanted to talk a bit about how to describe uh, motion or, or like spatial movement with data. It's something I spend a lot of time thinking about. Um, my acronym to remember it is, is love, um, latitude, longitude, elevation, and timestamp with the asterisk that elevation is only necessary for 3D maps. Um, for the transit flow project, this is the input data. Um, it, it has, so every like trip, every, every bus or train trip is a row. You have start time, start location, end time, end location, duration, route type, and then bearing, which is what direction the vehicle is pointing in. Uh, this was efficient from like computationally to visualize things because every object is sort of getting all the information it needs in one route. Um, but in terms of space efficiency, it's really not efficient. There's a ton of redundancies with the dates and the times. Um, so what uh, Cesium has done is, is create a JSON standard for describing objects moving in space. Um, and it's essentially like a big list. Um, you can sort of think about yourself moving throughout your day as if like you're creating a long list of timestamps. You know, at, at timestamp zero, I'm at this point in time. And then at timestamp one, I have moved over here and just generating this big list. Um, so that would look something sort of like this with timestamps and longitude, latitude, elevation. Um, how can we save space even further? Um, and one way to do that and what, what CZML uh, sort of dictates that you do is by plucking out the global start time. You can then refer back to that and use time steps, zero seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds rather than timestamps that have all of that redundant information. So just by doing that one thing, you, you have all the same information, but you've saved um, almost half, half of the space, um, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, you can think about optimizing this even further um, by making the locations relative. You could have a global, global start point, and then all of the other spatial information would be sort of like X, Y, Z in reference to the global start location. Um, but anyway, so if you can get the data you're working with into this format, um, it's actually relatively easy to load it into CZM's um, application. Um, I, just quickly about City Swifter, we do stuff for bus companies. I won't turn this into a pitch, but um, just show a couple of screenshots. This is our passenger demand explorer, um, and it's our tool to visualize origin destination matrices um, as like individual trip trajectories. So the user can select an area of interest with the mouse, um, make it bigger and smaller, and uh, on the left are presented with this bar chart on the top destinations for that particular area. Uh, and then we do modeling, like um, stop by stop uh, ridership models. So we build tools to uh, let our clients interact with the actual data and compare it to the models. Um, we're hiring, so if anyone wants to talk uh, after this, um, feel, feel free to find me and that's all, thanks.